new videos every day. Life Wisdom Someone recently sent me an email asking about sex, premature ejaculation, and antidepressants. And although we don't usually talk directly about sex, I thought this particular topic would make an interesting video. So I'm going to start out talking about sex and antidepressants and the effects of antidepressants on sex drive, and then I'm going to discuss premature ejaculation and give you some tips that might help you last longer. The email says, Hi Karina, that's me. I have a problem with the control of my arousal states, and oftentimes I ejaculate after three or four minutes. I simply can't control it. I tried some supplements with 5-HTP to raise my serotonin levels because I've read that antidepressants can delay orgasm. But after four months of using them, I found that they sort of work, but not really. My question for you is, can I try SSRI antidepressants like Prozac, Zoloft, or Paxil to fix my problem? Or do you know of some other remedies that I can use? Thank you, and I'm looking forward to your YouTube videos. So he mentioned 5-HTP in his email, and just in case you don't know, 5-HTP is an amino acid and nutrient that's used by the body to manufacture neurotransmitters like serotonin, melatonin, and tryptophan. And because antidepressant commercials often say that antidepressants act on serotonin, people get the idea that depression is caused by low serotonin. And in attempts to fix that naturally, they'll take 5-HTP with the hopes that that will boost their serotonin levels. It's well known that antidepressants have negative sexual side effects, one of which being inability to achieve orgasm and difficulty climaxing. And this is a well-known side effect of antidepressants, and some doctors claim that half of their patients on SSRI antidepressants actually have these negative sexual side effects. But this isn't the only one. There are actually other negative sexual side effects associated with antidepressants also. Antidepressants tend to negatively affect sex on four levels. First, they inhibit libido, so people are actually less interested in sex. Second, they inhibit your ability to become aroused. Third, they inhibit sensation and can actually limit the enjoyment of sex. And fourth, they inhibit your ability to achieve orgasm or climax. In some cases, antidepressants can literally cause sexual dysfunction, such as the inability to have an erection altogether or the inability to achieve orgasm. There's actually a YouTube video that a man made after taking Paxil where he claims that it caused sexual dysfunction. Now I'll include a link to that video in the description, but if you want to find it, it's called Antidepressants Do Cause Permanent Sexual Dysfunction. So if you can't even achieve an erection at all, then you don't have to worry about premature ejaculation. And if you're just not interested in sex at all, then again, you don't have to worry about premature ejaculation. But you might want to consider that these are real side effects that some people have experienced on these drugs. So this is a real risk. I also want to bring up the point that antidepressants are not approved by the FDA to treat or improve premature ejaculation. And when somebody takes a drug for a use other than the prescribed usage, this is called off-label usage. And while there are certainly some doctors who are boneheaded enough to prescribe drugs for off-label uses, why take the risk? In this video, I debunked the idea that serotonin has anything to do with depression. We take a look at the scientific literature and see what the experts are really saying. People from the FDA, the National Institute of Health, and even the American Psychiatric Association. So if you have any question about serotonin and depression, then go ahead and check out that video before you finish this one. The thing to consider is that antidepressants don't increase your amount of serotonin. They just prevent serotonin in between two nerve cells from flowing back into one of the nerve cells. So they just kind of trap serotonin in the synapse or the space between the two nerve cells, 
So it's not increasing the amount of serotonin, but just kind of moving it around and keeping it in the synapse a little bit longer. Additionally, antidepressants are mind-altering drugs, and they can have a myriad of negative side effects like nausea, nervousness, agitation, insomnia, suicidality, and homicidal ideations. The thing to realize is that these drugs are systemic and they're going to affect your entire body. So they're going to affect your heart, your lungs, your liver, your digestive system, not to mention your brain and your entire central nervous system. So if you're having a problem with your penis, then why are you going to take a drug that's going to chemically alter your brain? Not to mention affecting your entire central nervous system. I mean, really? That's kind of an extreme thing to do. It's like if you had a problem with the tire on your car and you went ahead and overhauled the entire car's engine. So to address the topic of premature ejaculation, premature ejaculation is not a disease. It's defined by Masters and Johnson as a condition where a man ejaculates before his sexual partner reaches orgasm in more than 50% of their sexual encounters. They further define more specifically that this is ejaculation within two minutes of penetration. So if you're lasting three or four minutes, you're actually doing okay. Despite what we see in all the porno movies, Actual couples only have actual sexual intercourse for an average of 5.4 minutes. And that's just the average, so that means that half of the people are actually having sexual intercourse for even a shorter period of time. Now, this is just the actual intercourse, so this doesn't include time spent in foreplay, but it is something to consider that most people aren't actually having sexual intercourse for a very long time at all. Another thing you might not know is that according to surveys, 90% of women cannot achieve orgasm from sexual intercourse alone. 90%. So by that rationale, all men are pretty much premature ejaculators. Because whether you're lasting for 30 minutes, 2 hours, or all freaking night long, it's unlikely that she's going to have an orgasm through sexual intercourse alone and you're going to be prematurely ejaculating. So to put it bluntly, if you really want to please your female partner, you may need to worry less about your lower member and more about what you're doing with your lips and hands. After all, the face contains 55 different muscles, your wrist and hand, 40 different muscles, your tongue alone, 16 different muscles. But functionally, your penis doesn't contain any muscles. It just stands there and lets the rest of your body do all the work. And I'll just come right out and say it, your hands and lips are far more expressive than a man's lower member could ever be. So if you can learn to make sex more about foreplay and less about your own climax, then your partner will be a lot happier. And if you're really that worried about it, then please your partner first and finish off with intercourse after. Remember that men tend to fixate on the penis because that's the primary focus of their pleasure during sex. But the penis is not the primary instrument of orgasm for the mass majority of women. And if you're not happy with that answer, then there is a technique which doesn't involve any drugs and which can help a man learn to control how long it takes him to ejaculate. It's called the squeeze method, and I'm not going to describe it for you, but if you want more information, then you can do a basic Google search to learn more. Additionally, some doctors will prescribe a topical anesthetic cream to numb the male member. Now again, this is an off-label prescription, and while this is probably a little safer than taking a mind-altering drug that's going to affect your brain and your central nervous system, I personally don't recommend using any drugs that numb your ability to feel, especially when the entire point of sex is feeling and sensation. So perhaps the safest alternative would be to wear a condom, which would somewhat numb the sensation. Or you could try doing long division, or thinking about your grandma right when you think you're about to prematurely ejaculate. A few other things to consider. One. 
The older a man gets, generally the longer it takes him to climax. Two, the less healthy a man is, generally the longer it takes him to climax. Three, weight gain and obesity have also been linked to sexual dysfunction. Four, the more sexually active a man is, generally the longer it takes him to climax. So if you're young and healthy, chances are your body is working just the way that it's supposed to. And getting a little older may take care of the problem for you. So those are my thoughts on antidepressants and premature ejaculation. And we made this video simply because somebody asked us to. So if there's something that you'd like to us to make a video about, then please send us a message or leave a comment. And provided that it's a serious and sincere request, we just may make the video for you. Women's magazines like Cosmopolitan are constantly featuring cover stories like the 25 sex moves, 52 sex tips, seven things you must know about orgasms. And this is in every single issue of the magazine. But how many sex tips can there really be? In a future video, I'm going to give you my honest to goodness tips about sex and how to improve your relationship. And in another video, we're going to talk about women and how drugs like antidepressants or the birth control pill affect female sexual health. So please be sure to subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it interesting, I hope that you will give me a thumbs up or share it with your friends. Please be sure to friend Psyche Truth and Karina Rachel on the Facebook, and we'll see you next time. To see what the experts are really saying about depression and a chemical imbalance, see our video, Depression, Serotonin, and Antidepressants. To find out more about the five drugs that have negative sexual side effects, check out my video, Prescription Sex Killers. In this video, we told you that 90% of women can't achieve orgasm through sexual intercourse alone. To learn more, check out our video, Female Sexual Dysfunction, Fact or Fiction. One of the sexiest things a man can do is exude confidence. To find out more on how you can improve your self-esteem, check out my video, Self-Esteem and Confidence.